Yong Chung is the founder and space operator of Commonwealth and Council Gallery in Koreatown, Los Angeles, founded in 2010. Our program is rooted in our commitment to explore how a community of artists can sustain our coexistence through generosity and hospitality. Commonwealth and Council celebrates our manifold identities and experiences through the shared dialogue of art, championing practices by women, queer, PLC, and our ally artists to build counter histories that reflect our individual and collective realities. Chun received an MFA from the School of, Art, of the Art Institute of Chicago in 1998 and a BA from University of California, Irvine in 96. Um, I would like to also announce the, the guests in the upcoming weeks, just to, to have it in our minds. So at the same time, same place, uh, hybrid as well. Um, next week, Natalie Ball has confirmed that they will do the lecture Tuesday, June 22nd, 1.30 p.m. So it's great that um, this can happen next week. Uh, Ruth Nowak, uh, Tuesday, June 29th, also 1.30 p.m. Kena Elison by Zoom, uh, Tuesday, 6th July. Chloe Bass in person, Tuesday, 13th July. Max Jorge Hinder Cruz, uh, most likely in person, uh, Tuesday, 20 July, and Minerva Cuevas, uh, Tuesday, 27 July. This lecture is recorded. Uh, if you are attending by Zoom and don't want to be recorded, please stop your camera. Uh, for those of us in the audience, um, uh, the camera is actually not facing you, so you don't need to worry. Um, yeah, thank you for Aaron to help organize. Aaron is in Zoom somewhere. And uh, thanks everyone for being here and making this meaningful. And Jung, thanks so much and welcome. I'm going to start a screen share and get this going. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me here. Um, I guess, like, you know, oftentimes I try to, like, dissolve into the space, you know, when, when uh, someone would walk in and they would joke, like, so who's Commonwealth and who's Council? And I would say my first name is Common, my middle name is Wealth, my last name is Council. And I think... Um, there was something to like the idea of like trying to dissolve into what a space could be for all of us has been really important. And the part about the space, space operator is that in a way, like all of us who are at the gallery, like we're all space operators. And yes, you know, we've been doing more art fairs and, you know, like, you're either owner or director or gallery assistant. So I think oftentimes like we are trying to, um, uh, and I guess raise awareness about, you know, how other, what other modes there are in like running a space like this. So even though there is a picture of me in this, um, I try to not, be as represented, you know, and, you know, like I often, you know, decline doing like lectures, but I, I've done so many. And then for me, like for you, it might be new, but for me, like, I don't want to like sound like a broken record. And also like, I feel like it's like not my place to like self mythologize, like what we've been doing. Um, I'm more interested in like other, perspectives for there to be like uh, multiple voices kind of like shaping our identity. That's why you could call it my laziness, but that's why I've also like enlisted five of us to join us today. And um, I guess with this slide, um, even though like I did come out as a artist, I've been like, um, back in the closet since like 2013, 2014, when I stopped making work. And at that time, maybe I was making one work a year. And when someone would ask, I would say, motherfucker, I only make one thing at a, you know, a year and the year isn't over. And that year finally ended in 2013. But I feel like in a way with the help of all the artists in the program, I'm kind of, I'm so involved in like, 
um, helping them realize their vision and their work and helping them problem solve in a way I feel like not to claim their work as mine, but in a way, um, the drive and the pleasure of being in my studio and, and, you know, having that moment of, you know, of epiphany is like happening all the time all around me. So even though I did, you know, go the route of trying to be an artist and, um, Yes, I visited like museums and galleries and I knew about spaces for art. It wasn't until um, all, the, all, the, all, the, all the years of like going out drinking every night at a local bar where like all the artists hung out and I started like building relationships with all of them that I, and being sucked into other artists whose like dream was to activate their like vacant studio and then activate it so that, you know, they could hold shows that I, you know, if I had like gone, if I had known earlier, you know, maybe I would have like selected to maybe like curatorial studies, museum studies, uh, but I didn't know any better. Um, I, you know, I didn't even know that that was an option. Like all, like I arrived at art making and wanted to be surrounded by art, you know, and, and it was a show at UC Irvine organized by Catherine Lord called Pervert. Um, so using pervert, not as a noun, but as a verb to pervert the viewer, um, it really like politicized me and it really made me realize that like, why am I in this department reading about like, you know, these dead white men and what they have to say, you know? So I thought at that time, you know, like a lot of amazing things were happening in the field of art, you know, like I could perform, I could um, write, I could make video, you know, make sculptures, make photographs and really like be a cultural producer. So, so when, so after, after like helping other artists kind of like organize exhibitions in their studios and, you know, unpaid, um, you know, like it would kind of like stop every time they need, you know, they had a show coming up and they needed like the studio space to um, make work. So like all the momentum that was built up, it would kind of like stop abruptly and then I would have to like restart again. So like during that time, um, artists created projects in Los Angeles by Eve Fowler and Lucas Michael. They were invited by Glendale College um, to um, host a show, um, I mean, to do a show at Glendale College. And at that time, like they invited me and my idea was to um, uh, acknowledge my mentors, my colleagues, um, my TAs that were like part of my upbringing at uh, UC Irvine in the mid 90s. The mid 90s uh, at Irvine, it was like a hotbed of um, uh, multiculturalism, identity politics, you know, so that kind of like informs like, like my identity. And so I kind of wanted so it was like, so it's kind of like a thank you show, but so but I titled it Mama Son, um, which is like uh, like my mom like owned like a grocery store and like the patrons of the market would come in and say hey how are you Mama Son, and even though like it's like a very derogatory term, you know I felt like it was like a term of like endearment. And it's like a Japanese like honorific, you know, you add a son to the last name. Um, so um, I kind of like added son to the end of first name. So, so then I realized like, I actually like doing it. I, you know, like I cry, you know, I had to call like, it's being recorded. Uh, I had to call someone who's in the show to borrow the work, you know, even though she's like, my mentor and she's the reason that I, I you know, like um, I changed my major from like philosophy to studio art. And it just because she was like with a big gallery, like they wanted like 
our insurance door to door and it would have been her entire budget for the show. So, so I remember like trying to make this show happen, but you know, she did end up like loaning the work directly from her studio to make it happen. So, uh, so I guess that's like the background, like inspiration for uh, pre Commonwealth and Council. So this is actually um, where I still live. I, I live at the intersection of Commonwealth Avenue and Council Street. And um, I, I was using the living room as my studio and there was a one day show at P Post, a gallery in LA. Um, Habib would do these like 31 one day shows. And at the time I was like, no one's gonna do that. You know, you would, you would go install in the morning and you would have to just, you know, deinstall by nighttime. <clears throat> and so I guess that's when I took on, but so, I, okay, so I made a commitment and I wanted to like, okay, fine, I'll do all the work. And I've um, selected over 40 works by 30 artists from my apartment. And a lot of these works were like trades or gifts or modest purchases. And the show was called Commonwealth. And when all these works came back into my apartment, the living room that I was using as my storage felt more like a store, you know, I mean, a studio felt more like a storage. And with a friend's help, um, we got two containers. I guess like part of me always knew, like this was at the height of apartment shows, of, you know, artists who would like kind of uh, use their living spaces for shows. I thought maybe, you know, like I wasn't, you know, like spending more money. I was just like kind of downsizing my livelihood. Um, so I emptied out my living room and my dining room with, with help and put everything in storage. My, you know, my art, other people's art, my furniture. And it coincided with Bala Porus Kim coming back from Skowhegan, needing a place to stay because her subletter needed an extension. And she was actually breaking up with her partner. And I invited her to stay with me. And she slept in the living room, made new work for three weeks, learned HTML, and launched our website. And we added counsel to it. So, um, so these are the flyers for the two shows. Like Gala was in the living room and, and I organized like a thematic show in the dining room. And these shows were um, up for like three, three Saturdays. So we would open on a Saturday from 12 to five and then we would have a closing and then we would um, try to publish like a book, like a little booklet. Um, maybe like 25 copies and we would leave out an envelope like like sliding scale donation and after like giving like 10 copies to the artist uh so you know people some people would put in a dollar five dollars twenty dollars but we we never we always broke even like you know selling the copies and then you know having enough copies to give to the artists so this is Jen Smith, who's going to join us um, after my talk. And she didn't live with me, but she actually um, used it as her studio. And she made this banner for us, We Make the Rules. Um, I would like to say that we do, <laughs> but, um, but it's, a, it's a journey. I think it's... I mean, we're learning every day, like how to do things. I think if there was a booklet or a manual as, you know, to do what we do, um, we wouldn't be doing it, I guess. Like we're, we're you know, I don't know, you know, make, you know, like manifesting it by. Is it screen sharing now? 
I'll just try again. Huh. Well, let's see. No. Is it? Excuse me for if for those of you on a uh, Zoom, can you see this um, slideshow? Yeah, I got it. The now. slideshow is coming through. Yep. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, and then uh, we thought we could like do this forever. So I, you know, I had at the time like scheduled like two years because it was essentially like having a gathering um, in my apartment like once a month, um, and. Um, but my landlord's father uh, lived next door to me and, you know, like he was like in his seventies and we were very close, but, you know, he, I don't think he, um, uh, he appreciated like maybe like 5,200 people walking on the hardwood floors and flushing the toilet. So he told his son, his son found our website and he, he basically said like we're running a business out of a uh, domestic space so after so in 2010 um you know gala show was in october so october november december we did like total of six shows like in the living room and dining room and we were kind of nomadic and we were kind of like floating around the following year and with a friend's help, uh, we found this, our current location um, in Koreatown. And this is Seventh and Westmoreland. And so there's like Obi Bear downstairs. It's like a Korean bar food. They do have really amazing KFC, Korean fried chicken. Um, and then there's like a Migos liquor next to it. And then, so the entrance to the building is like sandwiched in between. And then we're like tucked away on the um, south, west corner of the upstairs next to a korean church um next to an old one of the oldest uh latino aas in los angeles and since then you know a lot of like artists have moved in to for like artist studio there was like another gallery and there's another gallery opening very soon um but obviously like you know if you didn't know where we were you know you can't find us by like wandering around so, so there is this like dark, well, if you turn the lights on, it's not dark, but then like what we appreciate it is like this glowing entrance. And um, I mean, we got, we initially got it as a shared like studio. Um, I actually said no three times uh, with my friend, you know, but, you know, he like he can he got me drunk the third third night and then like you know basically told me, you know, like these artists, they don't care about you. Like you have an MFA. Um, you should make art. So like why don't we get this as a shared studio? So like a shared studio kind of makes sense, you know. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. So so, but then I held on to this front side space, you know, and then when he left, you know, um, um, we relaunched uh, Commonwealth and Council in the side room. And then, and then the, the inspiration for the next sh four shows that would happen was Glow, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling that I used to watch with my grandfather. And I love the idea of pairing two artists in conversation um not in opposition but like you know like a collegial uh dialogue so the first uh pair matt bass and mariah garnett they literally said fuck you young chum don't tell us what to do then they called it grab lunch or whatever the second they called it great lovers of women third gathering lots of wood and then gone living out west and here's a portrait of the glow artists 
And then we, uh, when Free Valet um, started to happen in Los Angeles, we decided uh, like we're in the focus section, which is like usually for younger galleries in LA and then you, you're limited to one, the presentation of one artist. And then we decided like, we wanna tell like the, the history of the space by bringing back glow. So then the first uh, was like with Rafa Esparza and Beatriz Cortez. And then our plan, I mean, our, we did another one um, uh, two years ago. And I think things might shift a little bit. But here are some images of like how we were able to increase the footprint. There was like a painter who was like living, working next to us and he passed away and because we didn't want the church to move closer, uh, we took the adjacent space. Um, and here are more pictures. I'm sure it's like we've like built walls to tear them down, to rebuild walls. So, like the 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 space has like physically shifted. Like every time you would come, like something would change. But but you know, if I, you know we did it with we literally like no budget. It was like so many people like helping us to, you know, here's a picture of Gala actually <laughs> helping us build our walls. You know, like our artists have like, you know, like gallery staff for us, bartenders for us, you know, they've taken out trash, you know, wash dishes. So, I mean, I think there is like a, a like a communal, it's not a co-op or a collective, but, uh, you know, there's like a very, um, almost like family, I think, more and more like family, know, family fight, I don't know. Um, and this picture is to show um, our rear stairwell. So when we moved in, um, you know, there was a fire that spread from the roof. And um, I don't know if like the, the building owner at that time, like pocketed the insurance money, but they never ever um, fixed it. And what they did was they just covered everything up. So after a year of being in the space, we decided to open it up to reveal the wounds of the building. So we have like, you know, novel architectural, you know, we have like open slats, you know, exposed ceilings and, you know, skylights that are blocked. And then like, you know, walls that are blocked with cinder blocks um, after like earthquake retrofitting. So like on the image on the right is a mural by um, uh, Julie Tolentino, who's gonna join us on Thursday. Uh, like we actually uh, decided to uh, remove the drywall blocking one of the cinder block windows um right before her show and and i think like she saw it before i got there and i think she was in shock but at the same time inspired to address it um so it's like a uh, so they just sold it uh, and painted it white and they invited someone to put a uh, text mural. Uh, it's like a sound text about shaman and shame. And then there's like a the, ch the, the bound chair floating in front of it. That's by Julie Tolentino. And then a year later, um, they full finished the, the, the cinder block window and they removed one cinder block out and then they embedded like a performance uh, uh, relic. Um, it's from um, like a performance Julian Pig did in Abu Dhabi with NYU students. It's uh, um, pig uh, dripping down honey, like on a gold thread into Julie's mouth. So, and they smuggle that back. So this is like honey, gold thread and saliva. So this is like a permanent installation at the gallery. And then this work is by Patricia Fernandez, who's gonna be the speaker after Jen today. And she's gonna join us to talk about this box, a proposition for 10 years. And it's something that we initiated in 2012, 
Um, at that time, uh, she was with another commercial gallery. And then when she discussed with her gallerist about this idea, the sculpture, this time-based sculpture that grows over 10 years. Um, and, and I guess like the, the dealer at the time is like, how do you sell something that doesn't exist? You know, how do you try something that will go up in value? So we said, we'll take it. So, so every year, like she um, sends me something for the box, maybe a drawing, a letter. I mean, always a postcard. I mean, it, you know, it physically grows and things are added. And we're, so every, every year we, we've committed to like celebrating the box on site and off site. And I think we're here in year nine. So she'll talk to you more about that and then hopefully our relationship too. And then here are, so you can see like the, the space. And so right now it's broken up into like two sides. You know, this room, we call it the middle room, but we don't even call it like gallery one, gallery two. We do like front room, back room, side room. You know, like we try to like stay away from like traditional like naming of things. Uh, so this is like another like iteration of um, uh, Trisha's box. So Olga will be joining us on Thursday to talk about her like civic, um, civic work along with her own work. And then this is Jen who's gonna join us. Uh, she covered the entire room with uh, these like, you know, fabric remnants. And then uh, during the duration of the show, like she would cut pieces um, thinking about someone and then like take it home, like, you know, like, and so like an apron or a cape or a bag, and then it would go on this rack with a tag uh, that has a dedication for who it's for. So she calls this like mother cloth. So I don't know if it's helpful to see these images to see like what, I mean, so like we have, you know, busted floors, like there's like debris that comes up every day. But, um, you know, it wasn't until like 2017, January of 2017, when like six of our artists um, had a meeting with me. I call it like an intervention because I think like, you know, as, you know, yes, we have a lot of artists come back to do their second and third. And maybe that, that's like the most like traditional gallery model that we've adopted. But for me, I was like always interested in like, when you look at the history of the space, and when you look at the history of an artist's trajectory, their career, um, how you might, like a historian or archivist in the future, could make sense of how, you know, we might have grown together and then see the, the patterns together. Um, but we weren't formally representing any artists. I, I think, you know, like that's why I think everybody thought we were like a nonprofit. You know, my thing is like, oh, you know, I don't know any collectors, you know, I don't know, I don't have money. You know, there's like nothing that I could like promise any of our artists except for me, you know, my time, my energy. And so I don't know, maybe, it, maybe like I, I'm, I uh, successfully manipulated all of them for them to feel empowered and to choose to be with us, to, to collectively, um, you know, represent the gallery, you know, but so at this meeting, it was more like, you know, you know, we support you, we support the space and we support one another, like, what the hell do you want? But, you know, but we didn't have our list of artists until like 2019. 
Um, Cause I didn't know what that meant. You know, it, it's a lot of work, you know, it's a lot of work. Uh, I mean, right now we have 32 artists and I think like a space our size, you know, people are like, that's impossible. Or like, how do you do that? There's like, but oftentimes, you know, like some artists would test us, you know, like, can you fill this out? Can you fill out this loan, loan form? Can you respond to this, respond to that? Um, but I think for the most part, like our artists are very like understanding and they do a lot of the work, you know, like, and they actually help one another. If there are grants, you know, they're always like, you know, sharing, you know, like the opportunities, you know, I think they all know that, you know, if one artist does well, like it's good for the program. And I, you know, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. You know, so not a lot of paintings, but we're open to it. I don't know why. I mean, I like paintings, but I don't know why. I mean, some of our artists paint, but so like I'm like rocking one of these bags. Uh, so this is like um, during COVID, um, I think one of the second shows maybe in September last year, um, Jen, uh, like, so all the letters are from the mother cloth. And which leads to our Zoom. So, um, so we have like a, uh, a weekly check-in with our artists uh, during COVID and we started um, talking about a lot of them are like teachers, some of them full time, some of them part time. But I think like a lot of our artists were interested in like alternative um, art schools, art education. And uh, it helped us launch like summer school last year. And it was like, like open to all and, and I guess like the key stakeholders who are more interested in like who, who the students are, like they were, uh, they weren't like instructors, but then like, I think it gave like a platform for a lot of our artists to try out ideas um, through the summer school. Um, I, I think like we're all like exhausted from like, you know, what they are from Zoom teaching. And so we don't know if summer school will happen like this year. Um, but other things that came up were like our like mutual well-being and um, and our like financial security, and we started thinking about like a you know we call it like the Commonwealth Trust. We started thinking about like how we could perhaps um, put away like artworks into a pool. And when that work, it, when the works in, in the pool of trust, when it's sold, it could be uh, like split evenly amongst the artists within that pool. And, you know, and there, there has been something like this called uh, artist pension trust. And they work with a lot of like curators to bring artists in. And I think at that time, like a lot of artists, like they were like uh, putting in like the biggest work that they didn't know how to like, uh, store or like works that were falling apart without thinking like, you know, like APT doesn't have like a conservator, you know, and I think when um, storage became more, more, more and more of an issue for them, I think they contacted all the artists to start paying for uh, storage and then which, you know, um, you know, like inside of chaos and and I think a lot of artists went and 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 destroy some of their works that they uh, thought could be remade in the future, and and or take works back. And I think 
what the APT model was like, if an artwork sold, the primary artist would get like 40 something percent, like 20 some percent would go towards admin and 30 percent, around 30 percent would go to all the artists within that pool. So I think they finally sold one or two things. And then, um, so like artists were getting like, like checks, like small checks for like, you know, a few hundred dollars. So after years of like, you know, artists doubting it, like, you know, they finally got like a check or two. Um, but that's when the story drama happened. So like our thing is more like, I think we have to store it. So right now we have a lot of video art in our comic um, trust. Um, but then the idea is, is to like split it evenly amongst the artists. And so there are, it's like, there's a lot of the concern amongst our artists was that, what well, is that, um, you know, what about artists who leave, you know, or leave or like artists yet to come? Um, I don't know anything about the artists leaving, um, but I mean, the future artists, you know, like, I mean, why can't, you imagine that they were always part of us, right? But anyway, like right now, we like to commemorate, commemorate the 10 year of the gallery. We have like a Commonwealth Trust from 2010 to 2020. Um, we have a trust from 2020 to 2025 for artists like doing their first show with us, like starting in 2020 or 2021, and we'll have another one 2025 to 2030. And this is like purely optional. You could be, the artist could be in all or just one or none, you know, like, you know, but we've also set up this other thing called council funds, uh, which is like a discretionary fund. And this is somewhat mandatory. Um, not mandatory, but, you know, because like, you know, like maybe like this year, like, like five artists are like selling regularly, but there's like 25 other artists who are not, you might change next year, right? Like, you know, you, so you don't really know. So, so like the idea that we came up with is like, kind of like, um, solicit our like supporters, you know, like, talk to them about like this discretionary fund that would be for healthcare for artists who are not teaching or who, you know, who are paying out of pocket. Um, and like a non, like for like non-medical emergencies and non-commercial projects. And so far, and you would come from the would-be discount. So like in the art world, I think um, there's like a, um, it's not a universal, it's like, you know, uh, you know, like almost like automatic, like 10% like uh, courtesy discount built in. And for me, for like, for museums, it's often like 20%, like in institutional discount, if not more, if they have a fixed amount to like purchase an artwork, sometimes they get like 25, 30%. Um, so we've been talking to our supporters, you know, private and also like institutional, and we've been like slowly asking them because it's not like we're like asking them to um, pay like additional service charge. You know, if like a work of art is $6,000, we're not adding 10%. We're not charging them $6,600. We're just, I mean, an ideal world, you know, like where there is no more discount. Like we, we're happy to just like put away like, you know, 10%, you know, 5% from the artist, 5% from the gallery, and just kind of like handle what we need to handle. Um, but right now, like, you know, we're kind of like um, talking, framing it as a trifecta, you know, like, so you're involved and then we, we, we are happy to acknowledge you on our website, be part of history. You know, I know this is like a case study, but you know, but a lot of them like still want the discount and be able to donate um, to the council fund, you know, so that they could do a uh, tax write off, you know, like a lot of them do. I mean, yes, yeah, like when it's like a few thousand dollars and then the 10% or 15% is like, you know, like 
few hundred dollars, it's no big deal. But if you're like spending, if the discount is like 3,000 or 5,000, then yeah, like I, I understand, like you might want to write that off, but you can't because um, we cannot uh, set up as a nonprofit because the council fund is only like serving our group. And, and you know, like, I mean, we're looking into like healthcare right now. Um, I think the option of, um, you know, putting all the artists on payroll, you know, I think we have to give them like a uh, minimum wage, you know, every month. We have like over 30 artists. So like technically to do it that way, um, it would be, it would cost us like $800,000. So then it's like, okay. I mean, I've already, you know, I don't have a dad. So I've already proposed to Gala, like, why don't you adopt me? You know, so then I'm like, okay, do I need to adopt all of them? You know, like, you know, is that how it works in this country? Do I need to adopt them? Um, so we're like trying to figure it out, you know, um, how to do it. I mean, I mean, right now we have like $90,000 put away um, since last July. Um, but, you know, when let's say like, okay, what, what if we just like split that amongst all the artists, you know, like, you know, when September comes, you know, so that you could do whatever. If you already have healthcare, you could use that money for something else. If you don't have healthcare, like you could use that money, you know, but you know, it's 90,000 is a lot when it's like together, but when it's split, you know, it's, you know, like $2,500 for each of the artists. So, I mean, so, you know, we're going to have to like openly discuss this with our artists and see what's possible. Um, I don't know if they want to keep it together and do something with it or donate it or if they want to split everything. So, I think... Maybe I end there for Q and A. Where? You can see. Okay, um, so for those of you on Zoom, uh, feel free to, to raise your hand and otherwise we can open it up also. And I guess I could, I could also just move this camera around uh, for those of you who everyone can see. Who would like to start? <laughs> Go ahead. Based on other models that you've seen that are that are communities of artists working and supporting one another in this way. Oh, I think it's like a model that um, we're like discovering by doing. You know, like our mission statement like didn't like uh, appear out of nowhere. I think after two years of programming, like there was like a moment of reflection. It's like oh, like we've shown a lot of like women artists, POC, like. Uh, queer artists and allies. So I think it was, it was by like walking the walk. And I think like, you know, it's, it's amazing that like COVID actually like brought us together for us to start like thinking about what we could do for these artists, you know, like rather than what the artists could do for us. And I think like, I always say like without artists, we would all be out of jobs, you know? So, uh, you know, you gotta like kind of look out for them, you know, like protect them and do good. You know, there's like a lot of stories of like galleries ripping off their artists or, you know, like not, you know, artists not being treated well, but you know, but art artists should like also like be like decent human beings. You know, they can't be divas and, you know, selfish and uh, unreasonable, but, I mean, I think we're like in this together. So I, 
think, so to answer your question, I think, no. Um, I mean, we do have a account with the council collection. Uh, even when we didn't have money, if the artist needed money, um, I mean, it was like very modest sum, but the idea is that like when the gallery buys it, like technically, you know, like the artist makes the most money because we don't give ourselves a discount, but at the same time, we're getting it like half off. So I always thought, Ooh, you know, that's a little bit weird. And you hear stories about like, you know, other galleries that say we don't pay for production, but we could buy an artwork. And then when they have a show, um, you know, like they adjust the price of the work. And because now like the work that they bought to support the production is now in their inventory, they could sell it and make profit and not profit share. So like then our thing has always been, it's like, okay, let's say we bought this for like $500, you know? And let's say for whatever reason, instead of like gifting it in the future, we sell it for $20,000, you know, we still profit share $19,000. So, so you still get eight thousand five hundred. Um, so it's a it's a promise that we made for for the artists whose work isn't in our collection. So, um, so I guess like maybe the council fund, the Commonwealth Trust, and like everything else that's happening is is like fueled by this uh, like ethics, I think, and how to do things like how to sleep at night. I don't know. You know, but uh, yeah, there's yeah, but then maybe this is a formula too. Like we've had a lot of lot of galleries like reach out, excited about the uh, just our discretionary fund and our you know, and they're like, so how do you talk to your supporters? You know, I mean, but in a way, like we're very empowered because like yes, we have thirty two artists, but we are like the primary gallery for most of them. So in an ideal world, I mean, like, so if you wanted an artwork, you could only get it from us. So that's different for a lot of these gal other galleries that share artists, you know, like, and so technically, well, you, well you, you're not gonna give me any discount, I'll just go over there and buy it. So it's tricky and very delicate, you know, but then, you know, but we also have supporters who like, who will wait until like certain works become available through us. Because they know, like, it's not only buying what they want, but it's about like supporting like the artist and supporting the space. You know, like you know, like you know, like you know, our program is like like a mirror of like my reality in LA. It's like a reflection of the demographics in LA. You know, so you know, like all this like you know, race towards like fair representation of, you know, like women and queers and POC and, you know, all these galleries on, you know, like, you know, there's like a race towards that, but ours has always been like that because that's like LA, you know, LA is like that, you know? So I don't think we're doing anything like extraordinary, you know, we're just like, you know, just, Walking around with mirrors. Maybe to tag on to what was already said, but it's commendable you've been able to cultivate trust. And that's to me what makes all this work is even if you have things written down, it's this trust between artists and what you're doing. And that is. That, that holding community that's really i know um but i'm just slow you know because i you know like the, the beginning of my talk you know i know it was like you know weird but um you know because the gallery isn't named after young chung you know it's not young chung gallery um i was hoping with like having a gallery partner and other people like now involved with the gallery with the space that somehow like Compton Council could live on outside of uh, like beyond my lifetime, 
And I think that's why, like, I wanted to, like, you know, like, dissolve more. Like, I wanted a gallery partner to be, like, more, become the face and become the voice of the gallery. Um, he's, like, maybe, like, 11 years younger than me. But interestingly enough, with the trust, you know, like, I'm, as young Chang, like, I'm in so many wills already you know, of our artists. I'm like, you, is this a fucking joke? You know you're gonna outlive me. You know, you, you know, and I don't want your like, you know, you know, like you, I don't wanna have to take care of your, yes, like as a galleries, like they take on like artists' estates, but this is gonna be like, you know, your like underwear collection or like, your like art collection that is like, you know, disconnected to Commonwealth and Council, only connected to you. But like, I don't want like, no, I have so much shit that I'm trying to sort right now, you know? You know, like I don't even have a will, but, but I think like what's been coming up is like, I've been asking them like, could you imagine, you know, you know, replacing Young Chang with common with the council on your will. Can you leave it to the space for the future of the space, for the future artists to come? And I think like some of them are thinking about it, you know, and some of them are thinking, you know, if they own any like properties, you know, you know, they're thinking about like how we could like collectively own it together and how you could be like, um, you know, like, not retirement home, but like a care facility for us when we when we start like getting older. Uh, oh. Vin, yeah. you had a question. Okay. Uh, Vin, 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 I think was up. Yeah, yeah. you'll get in your, your next. Thank you. Go thank ahead, you. Vin. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for taking the time to come out here and uh, actually talk to us about this because this is kind of a perspective on. Um, on the art world that, you know, as someone trying to make art, we don't always think about, you know, how, like, the practicalities of operating a space, working with our friends, trying to find a way to make a living doing it, you know, beyond just hoping to get into academia. And I, I had some practical questions about kind of how your operations work. Um, so you've got this fund that you guys have, been, have put together. Um, are you working with like a wealth manager? Because if you've got, you know, wealth manager, wealth manager, yeah, wealth yeah, manager, wealth manager. Yeah, if you've got no, like $10, no. I'd highly you know, do you know someone who like? I, I could, I, I, I could probably recommend somebody. I, I, I know people who have okay. had to work with them. Hey, but if you've got that kind of money sitting around, there's no reason you guys should be trying to figure out what to do with it. It seems like you, like what what a lot of businesses do is they'll take their money invested in stuff and use that to figure out how to pay people or fund whatever, whatever they're doing. Because obviously if you've got cash just sitting around, it's not doing anything for you. But, you know, if you're lucky, it's in a bank account and maybe getting some interest, but that's not going to be enough for you, for you to keep doing what you're doing. I was also wondering, like with the health stuff you're trying to do, have you considered, um, on looking into like a HSAs or FSAs and stuff like that, because it's like a whole model for healthcare where, you know, you have these accounts where um, the money that goes in is taxed and in the structure issues, it's going to be um, something where it just goes in, it's like a retirement money into like a body after like you take it out or you just let it sit there but you're limited in terms of how much you can actually get. Um, the, but some of those also, like you have to spend up all the money in them. A, a lot of, like in most corporate jobs, a lot of times with their health plans, they give you HFA, HSAs and FSA options so that you can use that to pay for like your deductibles and your um, uh, like prescriptions and things like that. That might be an option for you guys, depending on how you're incorporated and the deal you work yeah. out. And one other thing. Yeah, like, I mean, we definitely want to spend it. We, yeah. we, we want to start like the healthcare for sure. Like, yeah, so we'll make decisions regarding that. But, but yeah, but thank you for sharing. Yeah. The other thing is, like, have you considered selling equity in your, in your uh, collective? 
because rather than get donations, you could have people think, well, you're buying into it, so you kind of own a small part and then pay them dividends based on like how many items get sold. And then they've got some, some incentive to go out to uh, their friends and be boosters for you. Sort of like a pyramid scheme, but not quite I, as I know. Yeah, I mean, like we thought about like, I don't know what it means for a space like ours to like have a backer, like, like someone who buys a building or something. Um, but you know, a lot of them are like true believers. So maybe it's possible. Mm -hmm. But we've also thought about like maybe um, uh, giving uh, our artists like a shared equity. So they are like, um, so they have like a percentage of, of, I don't know, our future, I guess. But yes, so it's something that we've been thinking about. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I forgot to also ask, so uh, since you're being recorded, just tell me if you don't want me to put the camera on you and I'll put my finger over it. But I think it's just for the audio for the Zoom people. So do you, you mind being recorded? Does anybody else mind? Okay. If you do, just tell me and I'll, it's easy to just cover it up. <laughs> I just had a quick okay. um, you know, So if I'm in, in LA three towns and I walk into your space and shoot what's up, well, how, how is it accessed by the desk? Oh, it's, um, a looking room? it's by appointment only. Appointment only. Yeah. Until a, a contact number or website? yeah, it's all on our website. So Commonwealth yeah, I mean, if you like call or something, and you know, we could like schedule you, but there is like a formal appointment system. Okay. Yeah. Any other thoughts? How do you think about um, new artists recruitment and uh, how you kind of organize such an existing and collaborative structure around new voices? Mm. I know, like, we don't want to, like, you know, become dated, you know, <laughs> become, like, um, fixtures, you know, like, uh, I mean, like, we're always, I mean, we're not, like, we've never like actively sought out you know like we need like 20 artists now i mean it's been like a gradual build up and and like i said like we didn't formally represent artists until 2017 and that was very like organic too and i mean i think like you know if we hear something from an artist like I mean, you always have to put it in perspective, you know, like, you know, if they say anything bad about like, another artist, I mean, because we want our artists to get along, we want them to feel like, you know, they uh, belong together, you know, like, but yes, I mean, lately, especially with COVID, like, uh, like a lot of the new artists uh, are not so connected with other artists artists in the program so there is a disconnect a little bit maybe because of distance because they're not all in LA um but but you know I think it's always like you know like we rarely respond to I mean the early days we did you know like if anyone asked me for a studio visit I would do it but like I literally like you know, I was at the gallery, it was like a, you know, one person show, you know, like, you know, like I had to do a lot of it. And then like, I didn't have, I still don't have weekends. And then, so I would, you know, like do like, I would do studio visits before I would open the galleries to studio visits at night. So like, I thought about like, like, like sustaining the community and then maintaining the support of the community is by honoring the community. So we rarely do that anymore, you know? Um, we, we listen to our artists, like we listen to like other people around us and then we, we take it like step by step because like, I feel like it's already, uh, we've taken on like a, a huge responsibility and we don't have, you know, it's not like we're looking, but you know, well, there's always room, you know, when, when, when an artist complains, it's like, how are you going to manage 37 artists? I'm like, 
You're going to have 100. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's all a frame of mind, right? If you, if you think there's, there's like others like us out there in the world, you know, if you think we're like running an orphanage of sort, then why not 1,000? You know, like if it makes sense. So I think it's like great when like others join and share like the responsibility of like, you know, like radical programming, you know, they pay their artists on time, they support their artists. And when you hear these things, like it feels good to be sharing artists with them. It's like, oh, this artist whose who work I love is in good hands. They don't need to show with us, okay? Moving on, you'll always have my support, but I don't need to like own you that way or work with you that way. But you know, but when when you hear horror stories, you're like, oh, I want to like rescue you. But sometimes it's impossible, you know. Okay, so um, that's our time for this uh, lecture. We're, we're going to take a break, and then uh, for those of us joining us on Zoom. Uh, Hang up the Zoom and open the second link. That's for the rest of today. Okay, so a uh, 10 minute break. And thank you so much, Yom. Thank you. Um, so like the link that you gave me for like the artists, they all work. It's like the same link. It's the same link. Okay.